ahead of the brand new ITV drama, The Hunt for Raoul Mort, today we're going to delve into some of the region's most shocking history by exploring the manhunt and terror caused by Raoul Mort. In July 2010, the largest manhunt in modern British history was launched when Raoul Mort declared war on Northumbria police. In just one week, the 37-year-old ex-con went on a murderous rampage, evading over 500 officers and sending terror across rural Northumberland. But what caused this father of three to finally snap and go on his murderous rampage? Raoul Moult was born in Newcastle-upon-Tyne, where he and half-brother Angus were mostly brought up by their grandmother in the Fenham area. His mother reportedly suffered from bipolar disorder and spent a lot of time in mental hospitals. Mort worked as a bouncer and tree surgeon and attempted to get psychiatric help himself. Mort never knew his real father, who he would later be revealed to be Peter Blake from Birmingham. Peter said he had no idea that Mort's mum, Josephine Healy, had been pregnant when they separated. Friends and family of the killer said it could have been Mort's desperation to create the perfect family life he never had that led to his violent rampage when he lost it all. Mort's mother remarried in the 80s and Raoul did not get on with his stepfather, further adding to his unstable family life. After a series of failed relationships, he met Samantha Stobart in 2004. One thing Raoul said he always wanted was a stable family life, who he hoped to find with Samantha. However, this ultimately broke down when Raoul was arrested for the assault of a relative. The couple had a four-year-old daughter together, but while Mort was in jail, Stobart started dating karate instructor Chris Brown. Samantha stated her new partner was a police officer as an attempt to warn off Raoul when he was eventually released. On the 1st of July, Mort was released from Her Majesty's prison in Durham after serving an 18-week sentence for assault, which he only served around two months of. Immediately after leaving prison, Mort started to attain supplies for an attack. Mort made a sawn-off shotgun by modifying the ammunition to make the shots even more lethal. On the morning of the 3rd of July, Mort tracks down ex-girlfriend Samantha Stobart to a house in Burtley in Gateshead, where she's staying with her new partner, Chris Brown. He fatally shoots Chris just outside the house at around 2.40am, before shooting at Samantha twice through the front window of the property. Samantha is then taken to hospital in a serious condition. He was still under the assumption that Brown was in fact a police officer and not a karate instructor. It's believed that this fact added to Mort's long-running hatred for the police and saw this as the police taking something away from him. In the early hours the next morning on the 4th of July, he made a phone call to Northumbria Police, declaring that he intended to target police officers. Just moments after the phone call, Moore changed vehicles and shoots an on-duty officer, PC David Rothband, in East Denton, just west of Newcastle, at around 12.45am. He shot PC Rothband twice in the face, leaving him instantly blind there and then. Mort rang Northumbria police again straight after shooting him, admitting to the crime but stating he wasn't going to stop there, emphasising he was out to seek revenge on local police. The officer was taken to Newcastle General Hospital in a critical condition, and Northumbria police later announced the shooting as linked to the Burtley Inquiry. That afternoon, the force also warns the public not to approach Mort and say that they are actively tracking him. On Monday the 5th of July, the case is referred to the Independent Police Complaints Commission. Northumbria Police say they were warned the previous Friday by a Durham prison officer that Moore intended to cause serious harm to his partner. Samantha Stobart is also no longer now in critical condition, but Moore announces he has hostages with him. On July the 6th, 2010, the police now knew that Moore was travelling in another vehicle again, a black Lexus. This was a very noisy car, so the public appeal helped locate this car in a new county. It was found abandoned in a car park in Rothbury. A two mile exclusion zone is set up in Rothbury in Northumberland, where residents are advised against going outside. Meanwhile, Moore issues a chilling warning in a letter to the police declaring war on them. In the letter obtained by The Sun, he promises not to stop his rampage until, quote, I'm dead. He also said, quote, the public need to fear me, 
Most hostages are then also revealed to actually be very much involved and are in fact accomplices and not hostages. Carl Ness and Kuramawan both delivered messages to their families explaining their involvement with their, quote, friend Raoul Mort. Their families then submitted these notes to the police. After the pair were caught on CCTV by Mort Supplies, the pair were then caught and arrested. On July the 7th, 2010, the police now offer a £10,000 reward for anyone that can come forward with information on Mort. The Police Service of Northern Ireland sends 20 armoured cars to help the Northumbria Police, while the Metropolitan Police provide 40 armed officers as well. Police also find a makeshift campsite where Mort had been hiding out. Amongst the debris, the police find a disturbing message on a dictaphone, saying, quote, for every lie I hear about myself in the media, I shoot an innocent member of the public. A social media blackout then followed. On the 8th of July, the police had said that Mort had made threats to the wider public and therefore urged people to be vigilant. Later that day, Carl Ness and Kuwama Wan appear in court, accused of aiding in Mort's conspiracy to kill policemen. On Friday the 9th of July 2010, at around 7.25pm, a local witness in the Rothbury area reported seeing a man lying on the ground with a shotgun pressed under his neck. This was then later confirmed to be Mort. A cordon is set up in the area of Cragside on the edge of Rothbury as Northumbria police begin negotiations with the man from 20 feet away. It was also this day that former England footballer Paul Gascoigne turned up to the standoff between Mort and the police with chicken, lager and a fishing rod, but he was then turned away by police. Gascoigne said he was at his most vulnerable with alcohol at the time, where he was involved with a gruelling battle of alcohol addiction. On Saturday, July 10th, 2010, police fired two stun guns at Mort after around six hours of negotiations. Soon after this, at around 1.15am, Mort makes his final shot of his killing spree, shooting himself. Mort is then taken to Newcastle General Infirmary, where he is officially declared dead at 2.20am. On Tuesday the 13th of July, an inquest into Mort's shooting rampage officially begins. A Newcastle coroner, David Mitford, also confirms that Mort died of a gunshot wound to the head. The manhunt is also revealed to have cost Northumbria police over £1 million. Fast forward 19 months on the 29th of February 2012. After being shot and blinded by Raoul Maud, PC David Rathband takes his own life at his home in Blythe, with many saying he was Maud's second victim. It wasn't until the 11th of March 2011 where the two accomplices were sentenced to life in prison for their role in aid in Mort's killing. Carl Ness and Kawam Owan are found guilty of the attempted murder of PC David Rathband, conspiracy to murder and robbery. Ness was also convicted of Chris Brown's murder. He was given a 40-year life sentence and Owan was given a 20-year sentence. Many people wonder how long Mort would have been given if he'd have faced his sentence instead. What Northeast true crime story would you like to hear next? Please let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell and stay alert to any more future uploads.